Security. This interview is with Miss May Benedict, Department Head Emeritus of the Home Economics Department. At the time of the interview, she was 94 years old and was interviewed at the Herbert Nursing Home. The third voice, which is heard from time to time, is Mrs. Helen Musfelt, her cousin, who seems to be also her guardian and who prompted Miss Benedict in some of her answers. Miss Benedict, I would like to have you chat with me this afternoon about some of your recollections and reminiscences of the early days at the Institute. This is a part of an oral history project which I have undertaken and I'm interviewing some of the old timers because they have so many interesting uh, anecdotes and stories to tell. So why don't you go right ahead and talk very informally. You were telling about uh, Captain Henry Lahm and Mr. Bausch coming from Germany. And they set up the beginnings of Bausch and Lahm factory to dry lenses and to The factory was going, and Mr. Lahm went through the factory one noon to see how things were going, and he was astonished at the poor luncheons his workmen had, and he decided to do something about it. And Drexel Institute was ahead of us in long, some technical lines, and he brought up a teacher of cooking from Drexel Institute, and they had evening school for the workmen in the Bausch and Lahm factory. And this was even before uh, RAMI started then. Is that correct? They, they had the, the classes at Bausch and Lahm even before? Well, the beginnings of the Mechanics Institute. Beginnings of Mechanics Institute. It was called Mechanics Institute you know, yes. in the early days. Uh, Well, he set up evening classes in cooking for the wives of his workmen. And uh, then he decided that that was all right for the wives, but they better get something going so that the, the children, the, the, the younger people, would come along and be trained. So they put in, Captain Henry Lahm put in classes for children or for young people, and uh, when I was in the what grade? Helen? Eighth grade. In eighth grade, in what year? Oh dear, I don't know. Well, probably 1880, 1891 maybe. When I was in the eighth grade, Captain Henry Lowndes, arranged for all the girls in the eighth grade to have a course in cooking. The highest students in the eighth grade. And both public and poor. At first they didn't give them any extra time from school. They had to just go at school, school, school let out. Mm -hmm and get down to the Mechanics Institute, as it was called. Now, where were classes held those first few years? I think was that down on Exchange Street? No. I'll tell you about the, the work on Exchange Street. Oh, okay. But that wasn't there. I think on the Spring benches. Street someplace, I think. What? Wasn't it on Spring Street? No, no, no. That was a mechanical drawing, which I'll tell him about oh. later. Mm -hmm. Well, it we was Mechanics Institute. Mm -hmm. And Captain Henry Lahm sent all the, 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 
the 12 girls who were highest in the grade had the privilege of going down to Mechanics Institute for 12 lessons in cooking. I see. And I happened to be one of the girls that went. Now, how we got there, I think there were trolley cars. I think there were trolley cars. Mm -hmm. And I think we skipped went down by a trolley car and got down there and we stayed in uh, I got down there at four o'clock and I guess we stayed until probably six. Probably six o'clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we had twelve lessons in cooking. Now Captain Henry Lom was very practical minded. And he just I guess they didn't have gas in those days. I don't know, but anyways. He decided that we were all to learn how to build a fire. So <laughs> the Sill Stove Works donated a coal range for one of the kitchens. And Captain Henry now insisted on the, one of the lessons, uh, the first lesson, be it teach the children how to build a fire. <laughs> you told me the other day before the Eastman building, classes were held in old homes at Washington and Spring Street. That's true. There were, there were several homes there, yes. 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 Mm -hmm. well, then you, while you were in the eighth grade, then you took these, uh, these courses. I had 12 lessons in cooking. I see. And that gave me my first interest. And I went to this school and my aunt she, my mother died when I was very young and I was brought up in her family and my aunt was a teacher and she went to school with me one time to see why I was so interested and where am I at? And she and Uncle Will. Well that's something else. That was beginning of my interest. Captain Henry Lam insisted on a, a coal fire. The several rage people donated a rage. Mm -hmm. And the first lesson that the children had when they came from school was how to build a fire. <laughs> no, a lot of kids today need that. Well, that's right. <laughs> and then uh, later uh, you went there as a student, I think. I got interested. Yes. And I graduated from high school. Now let me see. The old high school. Rochester Free Academy. Yes, Rochester Free Academy. Is that where the Board of Education offices are now in yes. uh, South Pitchu? Yes. Mm -hmm. I graduated from that high school and I was going to I guess I went to the institute for it, first of all, for a two-year course. Mm -hmm. Later it was made into a three-year yeah. course, and then the la later on a four-year was for the degree course. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I graduated from high school, and uh, And I went to the institute for a two-year course. By that time, the institute. See, the institute was founded. The Eastman Building was founded in what? Fourteen. The Eastman Building was opened when? I don't know. About 1900, wasn't it? Uh, plus or minus? I think so. A few years, yes. And the, the, women's, the women had their board, and the men had their board. Yes. And I took the two-year course under the women's management. 
and just tell them about the Eastman building. Oh, this minute, I took the two year course. And I was, I was going on into a First of all, it was a two-year course, which I took, and Captain, Captain Henry Lyle wanted all the children in the schools to have a course in cooking, so we planned, the Women's Board planned to provide the kitchens, and Captain Henry Lyle supported them. So there was kitchen A with 12 seats in, kitchen A, B, I guess it was, with 24, another kitchen with 24, another kitchen with 24, another kitchen with, uh, oh, maybe. Maybe 12 more. Mm -hmm. Well, you stayed right on then after your graduation and uh, taught these girls that came in? Well, I graduated. The State Department. What do they do require that we have a three year course, I guess? Mm -hmm three-year course. Let me see, did we get that straight? Women's Board was established. And uh, Captain Henry Lyon provided the finances or 12 lessons for the girls in all the public and political schools. So, can you tell them what the kitchen looked like? Well, just a minute. So the women's board was established by that time. Mm -hmm. and. I finished my training in some way so that I could teach the children. I think I got, I was only a part-time teacher, you see. Mm -hmm. I got something like $25 a week for my part-time teaching. Yep. I'll think what they get. Mm -hmm. And when we got the children's classes going, as I said, Captain Henry and I insisted First of all, he insisted on my teaching each lesson, just as the student teachers, the practice teachers were teaching. Mm -hmm. So in one of the kitchens, A, B, C, D, kitchen D, I used to give the model lesson. <laughs> this is pedagogy for you. <laughs> I gave the model lesson, and the teacher, practice teachers had to go back and teach it just the way I taught it. Mm -hmm. One interesting thing was that one of my students went to New York and she was snapped up at once. They had no trouble getting the position. And she taught in the public schools of New York. Now this looks like digression, but I'll come back. You will see how I come back. So she taught in the public schools of New York. And she was an attractive young girl and she met young men, of course, and in the course of events, she met a young man who was very well-to-do. She didn't realize how well-to-do he was. 
but she met this man who was well to do and she persuaded him to come back to the Institute so she learned then that he was very very wealthy and they set up the library at Mechanics Institute. Now, what's the name of that library? Well, now... Isn't there a library building? Oh, yes, there's a library building. What's the name of it? Caught me unawares here. I can't off the hand remember the name of it. Well, never mind. It'll come to me, too. They endowed that. They came to Rochester and they ended up set up built that college. Mm -hmm. It wasn't in the style of the other other buildings as it then. It wasn't in the style of RIT's new campus buildings. And it was this man was very wealthy and it was endowed. And that wouldn't have been the Reynolds Library, was it? No. It was the, the Reynolds. Reynolds Library down on Spring Street. Yes. Wouldn't have been that. No, Reynolds didn't belong to the institute. No, I, I, uh, it was much later that we brought that talk. Well, yes, the Wallace Memorial Library is what's on the RIT campus now. Mm -hmm. It's not in the style of the other buildings, is it? Oh, yes, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I thought the architecture was different then. Well, they had different architects for several of the buildings, but they're all sort of fit into the general plan. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, a, that's the library I've been thinking about, yes, Wallace. Wallace. Mm -hmm. And he, she was the man that she ran across in New York, who turned out to be very wealthy and endowed the, the Wallace Library. Mm -hmm was a man that she married. Well, that's fine. Did you? <laughs> I didn't realize there was that connection, no. Mm -hmm. Now, you see how things go like that? Yes. Now, Helen keeps telling me about, this is a digression, really. Extra. Mm -hmm. And I think that was under the auspices of the Institute. Uh, the, some aus auspices of the Institute. Yeah. The first classes in drawing started in the evening, sometime between 1885 and 1890s, I've read okay, about. Okay, this was mechanical drawing. Yes. And I think they were held upstairs in Exchange Street somewhere over... It was Exchange Street yeah, upstairs. About where Weed's Hardware used to be, I believe. Uh, somewhere in the field. And then in 1900, roughly why the Eastman building was. Well, that was kind of digression. Yes. Mm -hmm. But. Well then, did you stay right on at Mechanics Institute after your graduation? Uh, or did you go elsewhere and then come back? After my graduation from the Institute? Yes. Well, the women's board had been established by that time, and now some of the women's board are interesting names. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Kishling, Mrs. Kishling is one, Mrs. Yeomans, uh, Mrs. Have you got the names of the women of the board? There? Yes. Yeah. Mrs. Uh, Kishling, Mrs. Yeoman, Mrs. Mulligan, the doctor's wife, Mrs. Hamilton, and Mrs. Hale. This so be, they made up the women's board. I see. I, I don't recognize the names except Mrs. Hale. Would that be Ezra Hale's mother? Probably. And be whose mother? Ezra Hale's mother. Yes. And the, Dr. Mulligan. You've heard of Dr. Mulligan. He's been gone a long time, but I know his daughter-in-law live up in the But mm -hmm. well, then the women's board, 
were very influential in the home economics department, weren't they? Well, they had, they are. <laughs> they said they financed the whole institute because they had such a good registration. Yes. We had, well, up in the hundreds. Uh, they brought, they brought Mary Bliss and Helen Hollister. They brought, I was at Mary Bliss. Mary I. Bliss and Helen Hollister at a private school down in the Hudson. And they imported them. They brought them. Was that so? I, that I had never heard. To take over the, the women's department of the institute. Mm -hmm. And then it grew and grew, didn't it, as far as the home economics? Well, they said we financed the whole place because <laughs> we had, such, good role, we had huh? such a big registration. Yes. A tuition. Yes. $75 a year. <laughs> as I remember it, $75 a year. You know what it is now? It's about 2300 I know, so high. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now, uh, from 1900 to 1915, this department grew rapidly, didn't it? More and more girls and a finer and finer reputation. Now, these women, it isn't fair to call them aristocrats. They weren't, they were the women of, who did community work. Yes. They did community work. And they, they thought it was a thing for them to send their daughters to the institute mm -hmm. to take a course in cooking and sewing. And tell them about the, the dormitory that the girls had. That was at 150 Spring, wasn't it? Uh, yes. Oh, that, that old story, building. Yes, that was the first road. apartment house in Rochester. Yes. You know, the, the first yes. apartment house. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they made that over into a dormitory. That was still there when I came to the Institute, and they were still using it for dormitory. Well, now, many of these girls went on to be teachers in the public schools, did they not? Girls that graduated from that uh, program. They taught cooking in the public schools. Yes. And they went out to other schools too. Now let me see. When I was later on, I became head of the department, and we set up a course, a two-year course for nurses, practical training mm -hmm. for nurses, and. Uh, One of my one of my helpers here, one of my aides here, tells me it's only a one year course now. And that was one thing I was interested in learning. What happened to it? Why was it made into a one year course? Well, uh, we don't have a course for nurses now. There is a Isn't it in the school in the Wasn't it uh, about nineteen fifteen or sixteen that the state education department a rule that the teachers had to have a degree or had to be certified in some way. Uh, some, yeah. some time about there. And then the Institute uh, got out of the teacher training for a while. Well, the president, I don't remember what his name was. Mr. Barker? No, the later president. Uh, Mr. Randall. Randall, that was yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Randall wanted to make a cooperative course for women. So we gave up teacher training and went into the cooperative training. Mm -hmm. Is that right? I think it is. Well, I think part of it was the, were the state requirements for a baccalaureate degree. And uh, sometime along 1915 to the end of World War I or up until 1920, uh, the Institute decided not to get into the baccalaureate degree granting. And so they 
maintain their two and three year program. But it did mean that their teacher training program, both in the home economics field and in the, the industrial arts field, fell right off. Then in well, Mr. What, what was his name? Randall. Randall. He wanted to establish a cooperative course for women. Yeah. There was no cooperative course for women in the country. So I had to decide whether I'd give up my teacher training or not to go into the cooperative field. And looking things over, I decided it was a thing to do. So we set up a cooperative course for women in food administration, I guess. Yes. And in those early days, the girls alternated, was it every week or every, uh, they were in school how long and then out on the work block how long? Well, we sort of made mistakes in the beginning. <laughs> when they came in, we sent them right out. Yes. And that was a mistake. They were a nuisance to the people who, who took them in. I remember. Wegmans. I think Wegmans. No, and they weren't Wegmans at that time. Well, what would the cooperative course be on means? Wait a minute. Yeah. Didn't know anything. So we changed that and we experimented. We gave them. I think we tried out 12 weeks and that wasn't enough. So then we worked it out so they had a year's... year before they went on the cooperative. A year before they went out on cooperative yes. jobs. That probably worked better. And then, then it did work. The teacher training was gone. Yes. I remember Lang was the president, Randall. Randall. He took it up with me. He said, now do you want to do this? Do you want to give up your teacher training? and do something that nobody has done. Well, I was interested in doing new things, so I said I'd give up my teacher training and go into the cooperative training of women. And we made the mistakes in the beginning, but we got it going, and well, that's that. Is it his widow that you hear from every once in a while? Yes. Huh? Mrs. Randall. Mrs. Mm -hmm. Randall. Yes. She lives with the Ellingsons. Hmm? She, yeah. she. Who were some of the other people in those days that uh, were in the men's department. In the men's department? Yes, some of the departments. Al, Al Johns. Al, Al Johns, yes. <laughs> uh, was Mr. Martin there in those days? Oh, yes, Herman Mr. Martin. Martin. He lived down in the Brick Street Institute. Yes. And uh, who had the electrical work? Well, Parker, Earl, Parker. Earl Green? Earl Moorcock, well, I guess Earl Carker had it for a while, he? and then Earl Moorcock. Uh, there was, wasn't there somebody with the name of Lang? Lang? That was the head of Earl Moorcock and Earl Carker? Lang. I'm not positive, but... Uh, I uh, can't place Lang. That may be wrong. Now, the... Uh, or oh, about the founding of the institute. Okay. Well, there were there was the home economics department, and then there was the industrial arts department, wasn't it? And then, of course, there was fine arts, wasn't it? Fine and applied arts. There was what? There was the fine and applied arts. And Mr. Alp was in charge of. Oh, there was an art school. Yes. Mr. Alp was in charge of the art yes. school. Mm -hmm. Clifford Alp. Yes. Oh, and in that school, they had a. Lula Barker. Bacchus. Mrs. Lula. Bacchus? Bacchus. Yes, I remember her. <laughs> you remember Mrs. Bacchus? Yes, she taught ceramics. Ceramics. In the, in the beginning, they had a, a kill. Yes. And she made her own models, and they made them and colored them. She was a great artist. Yes, she was very good. I remember her. You remember her? Yes. She was still there when I came to the institute in 1939. 
tampons or anything else, Ellen? Well, not. Well, the practice house. Yeah. Who? The head charge of the uh, practice house. Oh. I don't think we've got that. Either. Look at your book. Why well, your book? No, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't no, it wouldn't be in there. Be in there. The State Department required that we have a practice house. So we took one of those lovely old homes mm -hmm. on Washington Street and remodeled it. This wasn't Georgie Hope by any chance. Oh no. She came later, didn't she? Well, she wasn't only the novice either. No, she was in food. Right? She no, not foods either. She taught uh, Reading and study techniques, is that, did Georgie teach that? I think that's what yeah, she taught. I think that's what she taught. She didn't do anything in home economics. Mm -hmm. She's down in Cape Cod now then. Yeah, she's... Sorry, Georgia Hope. Yes. I hear from her regularly. Oh, good. We have to call a supervisor of the practice house, Elizabeth. And at Teachers College, she was a graduate of Teachers College. She had specialized in interior decoration, household decoration. So we furnished, she furnished, we did it together, the practice house. And that was on Washington Street. And the girls spent a month, I think, in the practice house. I remember that. That was a very attractive place. Well. That was still there when I, in 1939. Elizabeth was very excellent. I don't take any credit for it. She did it beautifully. This wasn't Eunice Strickland by any chance. She no, was, she was cooking. She was cooking, yes. She was expert in cooking. And there was another expert. This goes back for the Elsie Caring. Elsie Caring. She was an expert in candy making. And she was a Catholic girl. And she she had a sister who was a crack English teacher at, I guess, East High School, one of the high schools. Mm -hmm. And she decided that she was going into the Catholic schools. Into, so Elsie and she went to St. Elizabeth's College in, in New Jersey, what is the name of the place? I've got it there. Mm -hmm. No, no, we haven't been on that down there. Well, never mind what we're Wait a minute, wait a minute. recommended her for a dietitian's position. She didn't like dietitian's work and she went into teaching. Well, a great number of your graduates made very fine names for themselves, did they not? Yes, there's one just now recently that's been... Well, this one, who just got the... and the one last year. Oh, Ooh. Betty Monta Montana... Montana Yes. Oh, yes. Show, show him that. Well, he probably got one. Did you get that invitation? Mm -hmm. Yes, the And the one Sarah last Mar year. Margaret Gilmore. Mm -hmm. yes. She was oh. quite pleased with the one. Now, you see, she was a graduate of the... Uh, yes, I remember Betty Montanarella. Very mm -hmm. fine girl. Mm -hmm. She's being honored for her work in this in terms of the public schools. Well, that's fine. Now this, this is to be given this fall, is it not? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you yeah. get one? No, I didn't get one. See, I didn't graduate from the, food, from the home economics of the food yeah. department. Uh -huh. Well, <laughs> you didn't have to graduate to get that. Then. Well, um, well, you'd have to be a part of the school to get the announcement of it. This yeah. is what he means. Uh, we may we may go to this. We've been to several of these. Uh, mm -hmm. Sarah Margaret Gilmore. Very nice. 
Well, now let's see some recollections about the opening of the Eastman Building. Do I? Do I? <laughs> <laughs> I was a senior student then in the teacher grade course. And we were all turned over to help opening the Eastman Building. And as a senior student, my, one of my specialties had been mayonnaise dressing, <laughs> a salad made of lettuce and mayonnaise dressing. <laughs> and those are the days when there was no machine to make mayonnaise dressing. You did it at your did it by hand, eh? So the women served luncheons in what is the library now. Mm -hmm. And my part was to turn out luncheons, lettuce salad with mayonnaise dressing. <laughs> That must have been quite a task. Well, they, they gobbled it up. Well, must have been good also. <laughs> and what about the building? What was in the building when Eastman gave it? Well, Eastman gave the building, but he didn't equip it. You know that. We had to get, the women had to equip their department, the men their department, and the, the women ran this luncheon business to make money to furnish it. That must have been quite a task, uh, <laughs> making enough money off the luncheon, because luncheons didn't sell for very much in those days. No, so, it sure. was a beginning. Yes. And then they were donations, of course. Mm -hmm. Anything more there, Helen? No, no, I don't think so. I think you've Pretty well covered everything that we went over. Do you remember some of the names of uh, some of the other graduates that uh, made quite a reputation for themselves? I'll let me see. M U N T G. Irene Muntz was one of the well known graduates, wasn't she? She. Was she at the Gaston Electric? Yes. She was. She founded the Honda. The the homemakers department, I guess. The homemakers department mm -hmm. in the Belgian, in the General Electric. Mm -hmm. Gas and electric. Gas and electric. Gas and electric. Mm -hmm. Yes. She was there for many years. I believe she is recently She's, retired. Yes, not too, too not many too years ago. ago yes. mm -hmm. and she founded these, she started these bulletins. Um, how to make this and how to make that. Yeah. And people used to call her for advice. And they call for advice and help. Mm -hmm. And she gave demonstrations. Yes. They had demonstrations. Was she daytime. connected with the, that the war thing that you did in McCurdy's after you retired? Was she connected with that? Well, she used to come and join us. Wait a minute. What was the name of that organization? They had an office in the Caribbean. This food conservation, was this during World War II? Yeah. Uh, no, food I... conservation in World War II. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the wife of the, let me get his, the wife of the man who is now a very prominent physician in Southern California, head of a big college there. She headed it up. Well, I was, I worked, I was organized under Cornell. I see. I think it was organized under mm -hmm. Cornell. And uh, what did I do? Well, you were, you, he, you were the head of it there in McCurdy. wasn't the only one, Helen. There was no, but they were volunteers there that yeah. helped you. Mm -hmm. But we used to get out bulletins, recipes, and then help. Yeah. Excuse me. What uh, what year did you retire uh, this from the institute? 
who got that young. 1941, I think. It was mm -hmm. either 41 or 42. Well, I, I was going to say, I, was, I knew you were there two or three years after I came in 39, but I wasn't just sure. Now, you see, when I retired, I expected to stay until I was 65, would that be it? Yes. yes. I think so. Yes, yeah. yeah. 65. Mm -hmm. But if I wasn't that captain until I was 65. I always said they wanted to make a guinea pig of me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted me to retire. You see, the pensions for the Mechanics Institute were teachers had just begun. Mm -hmm. And my pension would be just a penny or two. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to make a guinea pig of me. And the board decided that they'd make up my pension. It used to be we gave 15% of our salary mm -hmm. to the pension fund, and the board paid for it 15%. Well, it didn't amount to much when I left. Salaries weren't very high in those days, were they? No, the pension was. So the board made it up so that I got something back, and I still get something like $79. No, no, you don't get that much. You don't get that much. How much do I get? It was near fifty-five dollars. From the, this is the American Association of Retired Teachers. Is that that's no? It has nothing to do with that. It was a Mechanics Institute. Oh, it was a board of, mm -hmm. it was a board of directors. They made it up, so I got. I see. That must be a, a special one then, because I don't. Uh, we're under what is known as TIAA now. Mm -hmm. Teachers Insurance Annuities. You see, the pension fund had just begun. Just begun. Yeah, that, that's yes. the one. Yeah. The pension fund had just begun, and there was just a penny or two coming my right way. Oh, yes. So nice. they, they made it up to mm -hmm. 4000 I think, something mm -hmm. like that. So that I thought I was getting... Did, I, did they pay you in a lump sum at that time, then? something like seventy nine dollars a month. No. And your teachers insurance you don't oh, now let me get that straight. Alice, you say that Alice Hutchinson? Alice it? Hutchinson. Now she was the one that was with RT French? Yes. yes. And she made quite a name for herself. She did a big name for herself. And I often wonder why they didn't put her name in as a distinguished graduate. She well, is a graduate. She made Maybe she should be. It should be looked into, and I'll pass this information on to Mr. Davis. put it down now where we have it with him. Well, he's got it on record there. Well, I want it. Alice Hutchinson. Mm -hmm. Well, 